Welcome to Mom Matters. I'm your host, Alyssa DeVere. In the next 10 easy to watch minutes, we're going to give you practical tips for more productive parenting. Today's topic is baby's first test, newborn screening, and we're here at the Brigham and Women's Hospital in Boston, Massachusetts with our guest today, Dr. Richard Parad. He is a neonatologist here at the hospital, and he's also an associate professor of pediatrics at the Harvard Medical School. So we're very grateful for you to join us here today. I know that we do a lot of tests before baby is born um, in, in vitro, um, and we're now talking about once the baby's delivered that we actually do tests right at first moments of life. So um, give us an idea, why, what is it that we're trying to test for at that point? Well, newborn screening uh, is a very effective way of trying to detect uh, disorders that the pediatrician wouldn't see uh, on the physical exam mm -hmm. uh, in the first hours or days or even weeks of life. And um, we specifically um, are looking for disorders that, that are potentially medically very dangerous um, and uh, that have a therapy that's available that if initiated very early before the baby even starts having symptoms, um, can really optimize the outcome of the newborn. Oh, that makes a lot of sense. So what kind of, um, of, of issues do you typically test for? And I know this is a big deal state to state. It, it differs, but give us an idea of the kinds of things that we're looking for in that newborn screening. Sure. Well, um, each state does have its own uh, panel of disorders. Uh, there uh, is a recommended panel now of approximately 29 disorders uh, that, are, it's, that states are striving to achieve. Um, and a typical disorder, uh, I think maybe the one people have heard of the most since it was the very first disorder screened for um, using this uh, dry blood spot from the baby, uh, is called PKU or phenylketonuria. It's a metabolic disorder. Uh, it's a disorder uh, where certain uh, toxins can build up in the bloodstream. Uh, uh, unless the baby's uh, diet is changed uh, very early. And so if we can take a blood sample uh, in the first few days of life, get a result back within um, a few days, and start that baby on the proper diet right away, then the baby can actually have a normal outcome as opposed to having a, a severe uh, neur neurologic impairment. Now, are all the tests done with a blood spot? With one very tiny uh, sample of blood, one can do an enormous number of tests. And when exactly in the, the life of the baby is it done? Is it done the first day, the first month? Again, that varies by state, but most states um, like to get a sample beyond the first 24 hours of life and by 72 hours of life. Okay. And and is it mandatory that every in all the states that you have some set of tests, or, or is it optional in some states? All 50 states have regulations that uh, require at least a s small number of those 29. Um, and that is by state regulation or, or law in some cases. Um, the choice to, um, to refuse uh, doing the testing is also state dependent. Um, so m most, um, many states do give the parents an option to opt out of testing uh, for religious reasons. Okay. But in most cases, uh, you know, 99 plus percent of parents choose to do, do this testing. testing. Especially since you said if early detection can be a key to getting it resolved. Yeah. Well, I want to take a quick break at this point because when we come back, I want to talk about some of the risks, maybe some of the pain potentially for the baby and um, all the other issues that we haven't covered yet in this very important topic of newborn screening. We'll be right back. Does your child have food allergies, celiac disease, asthma, diabetes, or other health concerns? One of the most important things you can do is to make those around them aware of their needs. This is especially true for children too young to explain it themselves. Stat Kids products were designed by a mother who struggled to manage her young son's food allergies and found no practical age-appropriate allergy-specific products to help. From bright red silicone wristbands and lunch bags that provide a bold health alert, to travel packs and emergency cards that keep medication and emergency information accessible. The Stat Kids line provides the tools you need to identify and protect your child. Select items from the Stat Kids line are available at Amazon.com and BabiesRUs.com. To see the entire product line, please visit www.statkids.com. Welcome back to Mom Matters. We're here with Dr. Parad talking about newborn screening. 
Now, if my state, for example, doesn't have the full 29 panel or has tests that I think are, doesn't include tests that I think are important as a parent, can I request those tests to be done in the hospital? Uh, you can, uh, in discussion with your pediatrician, uh, there are uh, in private laboratories that will um, will do additional um, testing. And in some states where there's a, not the 29 list, but a very short list, um, some hospitals will offer that to uh, parents before they go home. So what are the most common tests, if you will, other than the PKU you mentioned? I think, uh, you know, some of these disorders have names that uh, you know, I, I, I can't even uh, uh, speak without tripping over them. But um, congenital hypothyroidism, I think many people have heard of that. Um, uh, cystic fibrosis, uh, sickle cell anemia, uh, galactosemia, those are some of the common disor disorders. Uh, many of them are fairly rare uh, metabolic disorders. And again, you said that most of them, or all of them, once they're detected, there's something that parents can actually do or put their right. positions the, to. The disorders them. chosen for these panels um, must have a therapy available that will, if initiated early, will um, improve the outcome of the, the baby. That's great. So let's talk a little bit about are there any risks to these tests at taking the blood from the baby? Is there anything that could possibly go wrong? Well, uh, I think what most parents fear in having this test done is that little tiny uh, <laughs> yeah. a, a prick of the heel that has to be done. Uh, the um, the, the little pin that's used to obtain the blood is actually, we've come a long way in designing um, ones that work pretty quickly and um, are really designed to minimize the pain to the baby. Uh, many um, uh, nurseries will also use um, sucrose or some kind of, um, uh, sort of equivalent to a pain medication to give to the baby before drawing the blood. So very often the baby will not even cry when this is done. Um, it's a very tiny amount of blood. It's not an amount that will put the baby at risk for, uh, for uh, having lost a lot of blood. <laughs> okay. um, so I think that's most people are worried about the, the pain. But there are some other potential risks involved. Um, one would be um, sort of the, what the parent's understanding is of the results mm -hmm. uh, of the test. So screening uh, tests are not diagnostic tests. They are not 100% uh, effective in, in giving an answer in, in every baby. So uh, they're designed to try to find the disorder in most babies, but there will be both false positives and false negatives. So we will miss a small number of babies who have the disorder that the screening um, test will just not pick up because of the uh, limitations of the lab test. And the more common problem is that you are more likely to have a false positive or to get a positive result from the lab where the baby really does not have the disease, okay. um, which uh, causes anxiety and oh, concern absolutely. in the parents. So um, for many of the so disorders, um, perhaps one out of 10 of the results that get called out are actually true positives, which mean that nine times out of 10, a parent is gonna be called in for additional testing, which is appropriate and necessary, but they will ultimately find out that their baby does not have the disorder that the mm -hmm. baby was screened for. So we must take very seriously a positive right. screening result, but parents don't understand that um, it, there's a sure. likelihood that it will be a false positive. Okay, well we just have a few seconds left because I want to give you have some good resources, websites for our viewers to get more information, which are? I think uh, the best place is uh, the uh, National Newborn Screening Genetic Resource Center, which can be found on the web uh, site by Googling genes R us, uh, okay. G E N E S R U S. Okay. Uh, and that's a great resource uh, to tell you what your state offers, what disorders you're screened for. Um, and the March of Dimes uh, also has a lot of information on newborn screening for parents. Excellent. Thank you so much for joining us here today. I also want to thank our viewers, remind you to check out our website at mom-matters.com. We have information on previous shows as well as future shows. I'm your host, Alyssa DeVere from Mom Matters. Thanks for joining us where we're giving practical tips for more productive.